Welcome to Yukanik today in Yukanik. We have a 2015 Ford Focus on this Ford Focus. We have some check engine codes that are on. Um, we've got our check engine light on. And so um, we've hooked up an OBD2 scanner uh, to it, the Yukan Yukanik scanner. And now we've read the code and so we can uh, do that diagnostic. And uh, this is a 2.0 liter motor, uh, non-turbo in our Ford Focus, or if you have a Ford product with just the uh, 2.0 motor, uh, most of this should be fairly similar. So with the code reader hooked up and read the codes, um, gone through, let's just go back here. You're gonna go through the, uh, the PCM. Uh, I just did it by the, uh, selecting the, the control module we wanna look, and then we're gonna um, have it read the code. All right, so we have the two codes here, the P0010, and it's electronic variable valve timing control circuit and range performance. And then you have the P0013, and that's the B camshaft position actuator um, control circuit. And, we, and those are the, uh, the two codes that we have. I've done some diagnostic and some checking out. So the P0010 is the front sensor, or the sensor closest to the intake side. And the P0013 is the camshaft, or the B camshaft sensor, that's the back one. That's closer to the, uh, the exhaust side. So if you have any of those codes that go off uh, for these two sensors, the way that you would go throughout to replace them though, is that you do need to remove the valve cover. If you do need to replace these sensors for whatever reason, you've had these um, sensors go off and you need to replace them, that's, you'll need to remove the valve cover to be able to get access to the bolts that hold these in and to be able to replace it also. So to start with, we've got a lot of electric uh, connectors that we need to unhook and to be able to get the access to get all the other things off. So we have our connectors here for our cam position sensors. A matter of getting the right pressure to um, open those clips up. And then being able to pull it off front and back one, or the intake and the exhaust one. Same with all the ones for the uh, um, coil coils. We just need to pull the safety lock back first and squeeze and can unhook them. And we have this for the um, cam actuator units. You need to squeeze. Well, you pull the clip back first and then squeeze and unhook them. And we have these little they clip onto the the bolt studs to help hold the wiring where it needs to be. And then we have the one sensor that's down inside there. So you need to uh, pull this boot up and then That way be able to depress the clip and unclip it. We also have this, the, the vacuum line comes into there. And if you just put your hand down under and you pull the little tab right there, you pull that and it will unlock and open that. You can take it off of the uh, air box also, just to kind of have it up and out of the way. Um, I'm gonna try to get some more of this, get this electric line here. Get that, you get the uh, coils out. And so we have the uh, four um, eight millimeter bolts to hold in the coil. And then just pull all the uh, coil units out. We'll just set them uh, aside. Now, where we get the, uh, there we go. Got some space to be able to move this electric up and out of the way a bit. This is your uh, high pressure fuel pump. 
we've got a return line here, but we're gonna do, we should be able to work around getting this bolt out down here without needing to um, touch or, or move this way or fashion. What we're doing is reaching down here, there is the, it's the engine temperature sensor. Just gonna undo that electric connector. Okay, with a bit of movement, we should be able to just kind of have this stuff sit here. We're going to need to be doing a little bit of movement uh, side to side on this side when we uh, get there. And we should be good. Now we can go around and remove the bolts that hold the, the, valve, or the valve cover. So we'll remove the bolts that hold in that valve cover and then we should be good there. Um, if you had a lot of debris and stuff up here, you would want to make sure that you've cleaned that off before you can get to this step. So we have this one that goes to the, uh, it, it holds the fuel line. So we just need to get that bolt out off of the bracket that, that's holding the fuel line there. There we go. And then I just uh, rotated this little uh, bracket out of the way so that when we go to remove this, it's not in the way. You know, we just go around and loosen all of these. Um, the bolts that are in the valve cover, they stay inside the valve cover. I mean, once they're all the way um, loosened out, you don't, um, if you don't pull them out, they don't do that. So you don't need to really worry about having to remember where everything goes. Okay, so from what I can tell, they all should be undone. So now we just need to be able to get some pressure applied because we've got good uh, adhesion here. We just need to get this to start pulling away. So we're uh, pretty close to coming off and we just have these uh, seals that go around these sensors is what's holding most of it in. All right, we're able to work our valve cover gas or valve cover off, and now we'll be able to remove the the gasket from the uh, the cylinder here, or the we call it the head, and then you know, clean it all up and get ready you know to replace it. Um, we have the valve cover has been removed for replacing the valve cover gasket, and also if you needed to replace any of these sensors, one. Uh, you have your front one and your back one in the variable valve sensors and you need to remove the valve cover to be able to gain access to replace these sensors. So with the valve cover removed you'll be able to take your 8 millimeter and loosen that and remove that bolt and then this sensor here will pull right out. And then um, the sensor and the sensor in the back, and actually the, that sensor there. So if you uh, need to replace this sensor for whatever reason, that's how you would remove it. This one or the back one, they're the same. 
and then you just take your new one and be able to uh, drop it in there and then tighten this bolt up. Right. And now, um, if that's all you were doing is replacing these sensors, um, then now we're ready to um, put the valve uh, cover gasket into the valve cover and now uh, reinstall that valve cover. After doing all the cleanup work, um, have applied some uh, lubricant to these um, actuators so that when the seals go over them, it should go over it a little bit easier. A uh, little bit of a dab of RTV silicone right here, right here where the crank case for the um, timing belt or timing chain, I should say, comes to the side of the, uh, the block. And another little bit dabs over here on this big round portion so where the big transition is. And now we should be ready to bring up we have our valve cover with the new gasket installed. Um, these gaskets, you just you know, pull it out, take your new one, put it in. Just make sure that the uh, you kind of have a double rib side. That's the side that you want to be down. That's gonna seat onto the head itself. So we shall flip this over, and get it in there. Over here is a bit tight with the stuff that's in the way, so you got to kind of hold that up and slide it in there all at the same time. I'm going to start this one, this bolt or two on this side down a little bit. Just to kind of hold the side from bouncing when we try to press on this over here. So now you need to apply pressure of sorts to be able to get these seals to go over those. Uh, Okay, so after the uh, struggle of getting these to slide over, the seals to slide over, we've now got them aligned and sliding over. So it's just a process of drawing everything in, going in a good zigzag pattern. And we will torque these all to uh, nine foot pounds. We're gonna just work them down and be able to keep drawing this down and then um, torque it. So you're gonna keep this staggering um, your method to all the screws and just kind of drawing it down. A little turn at a time. This one's the uh, probably the hardest one to, to get bit on because of the uh, fuel line that's sitting in there. Okay, I got those basically hand tight. Now I'm gonna come back around and do a uh, torque them to spec, which is nine foot pounds. And again, we'll still do a good zigzag pattern. So we haven't hit torque yet. We're just uh, going around. It's still um, cinching everything down.
just a process of uh, continuing to go around uh, ever so slightly, bringing it down to the port spec. Um, just takes time. So you just keep doing this until you get all the bolts part and spec. We haven't even gotten there yet. But we'll just keep on going around and around and around. Then when I'm all done there, then you just go through the process of um, inserting all your coils back in, tighten the, uh, the bolts that hold the coils in, and then uh, hook all the electric connectors back up. Thanks for watching Mechanic, where you can be the mechanic.